This statue, I love to start field trips here for two reasons. One, this is a great view of the, what they call the Rift Valley, quote unquote, of the San Andreas Fault from here. That's what you actually see from outer space when you see that very long when you're teaching the Mars to fall. But also this statue, I just think it's great. It's pointing at the San Andreas Valley, that valley because the fault um, controls that valley, not only is it a great place to impound water, it also had a lot of springs. It was also known as Spring Valley. And the Spring Valley Water Company um, built its first dam, the San Andreas Dam, down there in 1870. And so these reservoirs have been here for quite some time. But the reason that we have the San Andreas Fault here is that we're sitting on the boundary between the North American and the Pacific Plate. Um, as, as you can see from this, uh, this little drawing here, San Francisco is kind of generally right about here. The issue is how easy it is to, to see the San Andreas Fault from a large distance. And you can really see that one of the first things that jumps out at you is that long linear dive. That's what you're looking at over here. Um, and how very, very subtle it is actually when you go to the ground and try to figure out where exactly the fault ruptured in 1906. And the reason we care about that is that exactly where it ruptured in 1906 is most likely where it's going to rupture the next time. <laughs> We're going to have to walk, so hopefully everybody's got good walking shoes, and we might as well head on down. line is this fence line, okay, the tree line are these trees that were planted <laughs> along the, the fence to mark what was at that time a, a uh, property boundary. And the rock is there? Well, you, you, the rock I don't think you see in the photo. Um, I, just, I don't, you know, it's really hard to find the exact place where this photo was taken because the trees have grown up so much. I suspect he might have even been on top of that rock, but I don't know. He must have been really right around here though, because if you look carefully mm -hmm. at the hills yeah. in the background, you will see that they match actually very well. Not exactly from this point, but within a few mm -hmm. meters yeah. of this point is where this photograph was taken mm -hmm. in 1906. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the ground rupture pretty clearly. Of course, when we go down there today, it won't look like that. <laughs> What I usually tell um, classes and students when I bring them here is that I'll give a six-pack to the first person who can actually find the fault. But it's actually, as I've been emphasizing, it's a lot more subtle than, than you might think. The best way to find it is to sort of walk oh, along the fence. <laughs> <laughs> but this, you know, some, some of the offsets along the fault, when you see photographs of, of fence offsets, they're very abrupt, very clean, very narrow zones of of deformation. This one is actually quite a, a wide zone of deformation. So the offset actually takes place over a distance of about five mm -hmm. meters. So it's more of a bend mm -hmm. really than an abrupt offset. So it's a little bit harder to see for that reason too. And the fence is not perp um, completely perpendicular <laughs> to the fault. So it, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Get to see this. There's one other one up by Fort Ross that still exists, but it's all falling down and in such bad shape I don't even like to take field trips there anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is actually quite a rare feature. The other ones that you see, there's another one up at Los Trancos yeah. on the earthquake trail. That's phony. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking down this slope toward a creek down, you know, at the bottom of the slope, and suddenly it levels out. Yeah. And not only does it level out, but there's a little bit of an uphill facing, yeah. what we call an okay. uphill facing slope. This is actually the San Andreas Fault right here. And the best way to actually see this 
in my experience, is to walk down the fence and sight back up, and you really do notice how it oh, shifted. Yeah. Yeah. The offset it's here nice was about nice 2.7 meters. Or about so the best way to see this is to come down here and sight up the fence, and you'll notice that it is abruptly shifted right here where we have this unusual feature in the landscape. So this is it, folks. This is the place down there. The active place boundary between the Pacific and North American place. standing right on it. And, that's it's here. and it's this little <laughs> dip here, this little right. bench that you have, this little back facing scarf. This actually, in uh, in the winter time, collects a little bit of water. It's a, a little tiny sag pond. And again, this, this displacement here was about 2.7 meters or 9 feet in 1906. This was surveyed after the earthquake. It's been surveyed multiple times. You want to put your house right here because you know you, it offset your your foundation. But but for most people, uh, the general view is that it wouldn't matter whether you were 10 meters from the fault or a kilometer from the fault. You'd see about the same shaking. Coming towards us, it wants to just head downhill. That's what mm -hmm. stream channels like to do. But it gets to the fault here, and it takes this very abrupt bend, like and then it will, um, if you walk further down there, you can see where it bends back and just heads on down the slope again. So this stream, depending on um, exactly how you, how you measure the offset, um, it's offset somewhere between about 50 and 90 meters, something like that.